the insidious killer that's almost impossible to detect. You need to be attuned to the signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer and they're quite generalised. They could include pelvic pain, bloating of the stomach, urgency or frequency of wanting to go to the toilet. Until now, the only diagnosis for ovarian cancer has been life-altering surgery to remove both ovaries for testing. A patient will be obviously instantly in menopause, but also at risk of developing a, a host of other health conditions, elevated risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, dementia, osteoporosis and so on. It's an extreme way to diagnose a cancer, especially when 9 out of 10 women who undergo the invasive surgery don't actually have the illness. Now for those patients, they might have substantial benefit through having a more conservative surgical approach, particularly around preservation of ovarian function. But today, an exciting breakthrough. Melbourne researchers have developed a series of blood tests, the first of which distinguishes between a non-cancerous cyst and something more sinister. The second test that we'll roll out is something to detect cancer recurrence. And then the third test is that routine screening, very similar to what we do with pap smears or mammograms, can be used to pick up early stage ovarian cancers. So those, those tests are being rolled out in stages. Almost 2,000 Aussie women are diagnosed with ovarian cancer each year. And because the disease is often undetected until well advanced, more than half of those women will die in five years. So this test could be a game changer. Ovarian cancer is the deadliest of all women's cancers and that's where the promise is so that uh, women like me don't have to go through a surgery or they don't have, you know, the trauma of thinking, do they have cancer? Researchers say it's the first major development in diagnosing ovarian cancer and they're hoping to roll out the first of the three tests within two years. Jordana Thompson has been diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer and has been good enough to speak to us about it. Uh, Jordana, how did you find out you were sick? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I found out actually in April on Good Friday. I had been having very uh, vague symptoms, which is often the case with ovarian cancer. So things like bloating, um, feeling full after eating very small amounts, um, trying not to lose weight, but losing weight in the process. Um, very, very uh, confusing symptoms, I guess. And I did have some pain in my stomach as well. I had been to my doctor prior to having these symptoms about six months earlier and had some pain and similar symptoms. And I had mentioned that I have celiac disease as well. So my GP was just not too worried about any of those other symptoms. And she just put it down to being a busy mum. And so six months later, I went and saw a girlfriend of mine who's a complementary medicine practitioner. And she very quickly picked up that she was not happy with some of these symptoms. And she actually drove me straight to emergency emergency, um, at which stage I had some scans and some blood tests. And it was four hours after that that I was informed that I had stage four ovarian cancer. Oh. So very scary, very quick and very shocking. I can't imagine, Jordana, what it must have been like to get that news. Can, can we talk about this idea of early uh, detection, blood tests and screening? I mean, have you thought this through yourself? What kind of difference this might have made for you? Oh, absolutely. Huge difference. Um, in a matter of six months, I, I could have been possibly, if this was around, diagnosed at a much earlier stage, at stage two um, or one even. And so it would have made a very, very big difference to my treatment plan, my surgical options moving forward. I'm currently about to undergo round six of chemotherapy and then I'll have a very big surgery on top of that afterwards. So it would have changed things significantly for me and my treatment options for sure. Is the news bittersweet for you, Jordana? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But the, the more I think the more we can um, bring awareness and more research and obviously the amazing work that the Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation has done in funding this research is just incredible to get to this point. And the fact that it's in Australia is really exciting too. Um, a lot of people do end up searching overseas for treatments. So to have this here for us and being developed and hopefully approved in the next two years and to have that early detection is just going to be a game changer. It's going to be fantastic. So yeah, really exciting. But 
very, very bittersweet. Yeah, absolutely. Jordana, mums are really good at looking at after other people. Um, not so good at looking after ourselves sometimes. Uh, what would you say to other women who <laughs> might suspect that, that something's wrong? I would just say please advocate for yourself, especially with ovarian cancer, as I did mention, that the symptoms are so vague and they really could be or mean anything. Um, so any of those symptoms, I would just encourage women to push for more investigation and to exhaust all avenues of if there's something that you're just thinking is not quite right, don't ignore it and make sure that you advocate for yourself as much as you can. Jordana, thanks so much for speaking to us tonight. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me.